One of the most common jobs that aircraft maintenance encounters is wheel changes. And what we have here is a bad wheel, way beyond limits. This is an Airbus A321 and that is the number one wheel. So now we get to change it. Stick around, it's gonna be a little bit of a long video and a bit of a tutorial, but I'm gonna mention this right now. This is for reference only. For anybody that is doing this job, please reference your aircraft maintenance manuals for proper procedures. First things first, all safety devices are installed. Main landing gear and nose wheel landing gear, safety lock down lock pins installed. As well as all circuit breakers that pertaining to the job also pulled and collared. Up next, we jack up the axle. Brings the aircraft up about an inch off the ground. It uses compressed air, whether from the tire itself or an external source. Next, we remove the fan cover. If you guys didn't know, Airbus has brake fans. Boeing does not. The brake fan cover or the screen is held on by a few tab washers and bolts. Once those are removed, we can remove it. Once again, I just have to remind you, follow your maintenance manual procedures or whatever your company dictates. This is a reference only video and just a showcase of how we do this job. Once the screen has been removed, now we can place all the hardware and components in a safe location and then remove the dust cover. Once that is done, now we expose the brake fan itself. This thing is what it basically does. It pushes air out outside of the wheel hub assembly and cools the brakes. Once the nut is removed, we take the fan off, don't lose the washer, and we place it aside. This is turning into one of those videos that's how it's made, isn't it? Up next it is the clamp that holds the housing that hold all those components together. It's simply held on by a V-band clamp. Not very complicated. A 3 8 uh, socket takes it right off. Once it's loose, we simply remove it. Believe it or not, majority of aircraft maintenance is actually utilizing quarter inch ratchets and quarter inch tools for these kind of jobs. So no, we don't use big tools, quite actually very small tools. Once that's removed, now the main nut is exposed and also the little smaller nuts and bolts that are the anti-rotation nuts and bolts for the main nut. They have also cotter pins, which you saw me remove right there. And we remove two of those, as you can see right there. Now the main nut, the main axle nut, can be loosened and removed. We need to clear the area and clean up all our tools here for a second because we are going to be utilizing the dolly. This is the socket that goes on to the main nut right there, and we will be loosening it. All right, so there's a bit misconception on if you can use a torque wrench to loosen anything. There are particular torque wrenches that are reversible. Now, if you set a torque wrench above the torque limit of the nut, well, guess what? It acts like a breaker bar. So yes, you can use a torque wrench to loosen. It just depends on the type of torque wrench you're using. The ones that we are using, you are able to loosen anything that you want once you have the torque wrench set above the torque limit. In any case, we remove the main nut and then we put on a threat protector, which you see right there. Also take note of how high the aircraft has actually been jacked up. I told you, about an inch off the ground, not very high. Once everything is installed properly, now we can bring in the dolly. This is a two-person job. These wheels are very heavy. They weigh close to about 220, 230 pounds. Once the dolly is in place, now we have to wiggle the wheel assembly out itself. The wheel assembly actually hugs the brake assembly. The brakes on this particular aircraft are carbon ceramic disc brakes, and they are stacked. They have very specific slots where the wheel assembly slides into. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention, the wheel assembly or the tire has to be deflated. Once the wheel is removed, we'll inspect the axle and all the assemblies within. Re-lubricate them and get the new tire on. Basically, in a reverse procedure, we will get the wheel assembly in place, get the dolly, jack it up and bring it up to a sufficient height for clearance and then push right back into the brake assembly or onto and as well as onto the axle I should say. 
take caution when you are installing the wheel assembly in because the wheel assembly also houses the bearings within them because you once you push it in you don't want the bearings to be popping out the bearings are held down by c-clips so just take care and be careful not to misalign the wheel onto the axle once you're pushing it back onto the brake assembly or the axle let's see did you make it this far if you did thank you hold on you're almost there we got a little bit more to go yeah the wheel change is not that bad with a good crew and with proper equipment in place the wheel change can actually happen within 15 minutes but logistics and manpower also have to be taken into consideration all right back to the job once the wheel is in place the thread protector is removed the main axle nut is now being put on right there as you can see i'm snugging it up i want to see at least a couple of threads before i start torquing it there's two variations of torque when it comes down to these initial and final most people are amazed to know that there's only one nut actually holding the wheel but it's much like f1 formula cars all right on to the torquing one person has to spin the wheel and the other person which is me right there has to torque it the initial torque varies because there's a gap but i'm gonna give you the middle ground about 300 foot pounds initial and we have to loosen it up back to zero once we loosen it then we retorque it to final torque which is about 150 foot pounds once that is done basically everything in reverse with a little bit of new hardware the anti-rotation nuts for the main nut right there gets placed back in with new cotter pins and new nuts and basically everything else goes back in reverse as you can see the housing and the v-band clamp goes right back on there the brake fan itself goes right back on we re-safety that one right there once that's done we put on the rest of the back the dust cover or the cap right there and then the screen for the brake fan assembly very easy end of the day guys it is not a very hard job it's a little bit laborious and obviously all these components i didn't get a chance to show you how to torque but yes everything is torqued everything is according to maintenance manuals by the way there's also new tab washers that are being used right there so yes everything is being replaced whichever is needed to be replaced but overall it's not a very hard job at the end uh, we Pull the, uh, push the circuit breakers back in and then we do a operational check on a brake fan once that is done it's good to go now it's on to the paperwork probably the paperwork takes longer than the job itself i give a thumbs up to my partner over there because he turned on the brake fans and i confirmed that they are functional and working well i do an overall inspection make sure everything's good Afterwards, I also did not show here. I also checked the tire pressure of the wheel, the new wheel that's being installed. And a quick little view to the taxiway over there. Always nice to see the airplanes running around. But yeah, that's about it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. That's a basic tutorial or a, just a observation on how to change the wheel. Take care.